What's up guys and welcome to another video. We're back in very dreary North Carolina. I figured I'd show you some behind the scenes. What are you guys gonna do, babe? Just smile and look cute. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I'm Juby and this is Justin, and me our sweet nugget, Azalea. We've been living in our self-converted school bus since 2018, and after a year and a half of building our home, we've finally hit the road. Join us for the ride as we continue our adventures in our big red pepper. So on Instagram, I asked you guys if you had any questions for things that you'd want to know about my business, Moonflower Child, and just like figured I'd answer as many of them as I could um, and kind of get to the nitty gritty as best as I can. So these two are very similar. How do you stock up on packaging and materials in general while on the road? And how do you store everything? And How's it all kept away from Little Nugget? Most of where I keep my product is kind of scattered about all over the bus. First off, I keep my shipping label sticker printer here. It's a Dymo, the 4XL, so it prints 4x6 stickers. And in this closet here, I keep boxes, recyclable mailers. I have smaller boxes in there. So I have these compostable bags here for all kinds of like clothing and scarves, cardboardy envelopes for your journals, which are here. Some bags for like if someone I am meeting in person, essential oil blends, some jewelry bags for in-person sales. For all your online orders, I have these little jewelry pouches. Jewelry, trusty label maker. Candle inventory under here. A while back we made a video that was about how we shower and a lot of you asked about the body oil that I was using. I decided to make an oil from my apothecary line. This is a nourishment oil, so it's a blend of coconut oil and almond oil. And then it has chamomile flowers along with myrrh and frankincense essential oils. I have this little drawer cabinet here. Inventory for my Herbal perfumes and wherever I can fit these because they're quite large, but I've got a dreadlock tightener stashed here and some soul solve Which is a really great like body healer for cuts scrapes bruises all that kind of stuff I have to make more of these uh, healing mist keep my hair serum in here and lip balms I have Palo Santo all my smudge sticks. So this top shelf also is a little bit chaotic I keep some boxes that are readily available for when I'm packing and shipping orders here I keep my journal and day planner here so that I can keep up with everything and take my email sign up sheet in this basket here I keep all the like clothing and wearable goods packaging I also have all these popcorn kernels those are also dissolvable keep all kinds of just wrapping paper over here in these drawers I keep my stickers for packing and wrapping your orders and my thank you note cards. I have envelopes for sending out checks, adapter for my laptop, small iPad for when I'm bending in person. These are old wing tags that I used to use, chargers, hard drives. This drawer I have essential oils, vials that I use to pre-blend my products, ones that are in progress. And at the back I keep my candle oils shipping sticking labels samples so these guys are all have been like used and opened all right so on this side over here this is where i keep a lot of my like more bulk goods so i have all my oils pipettes reserve backstock of moon dust and small funnels beeswax as well as the mold i keep cheesecloth that I use to strain and clean the beeswax, powders for moon dust and the dreadlock tightener. Over here, I keep back stock super tight clothes because Azalea gets curious, but I keep empty vessels. I reuse all the plastic Ziploc bags that people send me, empty lip balm tubes, biodegradable pouches, boxes way back under there. Honey is about to be back in stock. We can only carry so much honey with us on the bus. For now, it's stashed here in the back with all our pots and pens. I keep my pot for making my lip balms and candles. Lastly, over here, I keep Tissue paper, Chinese sky lantern, more of my thank you cords, coconut oil, my chamomile flowers, more coconut oil that's the hardening kind. I keep dry flowers. I have like a whole reserve 
of all these dried flowers that I either use for product or display in my photos. Diatomaceous earth, hemp cord, pre-blended oils, almond oil that I have back there, and then also my candle wax, distilled water. So everything is kind of stashed in its home where the cat's litter box was gonna be, but is now, <laughs> is now my bulk goods section. Um, I think that's pretty much like all of my moonflower child stuff that's kind of like scattered about the bus. I'm gonna be working on these nourishment oils today and also the healing mist, so let's get going. If I am making product or packaging and shipping your orders, then it all happens from the kitchen. Make sure it's super clean and sanitized. And I normally also use the cutting board as an added work surface over here. Do you ship internationally? Shipping internationally from the US is a little bit more expensive, so the yeah, price is just a little different than if you were shipping just here domestically into the US. But yes, I do ship worldwide. How do you figure shipping, and how did you promote your business at the beginning? When it comes to shipping, there's multiple different platforms that you can use. I just do everything through Shopify. Each of my products that I list, I weigh them. As far as promoting at the beginning, I really struggled with that. I never really studied marketing and business and all this kind of stuff that you need to study if you're gonna have your own business. Because whilst it might look glamorous and I'm taking pictures all the time and buying new product, and that's just one side of it. And that's the side that I love the most. But then there's the other side that challenges me the most. And that side is the business, financial, marketing, all this kind of stuff. First started with Etsy. Back when I was doing that, I feel like it was a much less saturated market and my product was more easily visible. I stopped using Etsy because I didn't like the lack of freedom that the platform offers. I wanted to create a more unique customer experience. I was doing Instagram, but I never really caught onto the whole Instagram wave until much later. Facebook page, I post to Facebook, I post inspirational things. I love hearing about customer reviews. I also love the more one-on-one -on -one engagement that we can have as a community. You can also host events, which is a great place to market your business, paid advertising, Google AdSense, brand ambassadors. Lastly, what really made things take off, thanks to all of you guys, which I'm so, so grateful for, was the YouTube has really been the catalyst to get my online boutique where it is today. I'm not saying that everybody should do YouTube because it's a lot of work, no joke. But I'm saying that it's a really amazing and honest way to expose more about your business, who you are, and behind the scenes of how things run. And it just allows you to have more of a trustworthy relationship with your customers. So they're able to learn more about you and your product and expose the business for what it truly is because that's when your customers truly get to see who you are and what you do and how things work. And that's exciting. I want to support businesses that I can see behind the scenes that it's real people working hard and creating what it is that you're supporting. I was doing more kids left and right, raw artists, runway shows, collaborations with photographers that I would meet, cross brand promoting, so collaboration is huge. So after I get done making a product, I then have to list it online. And once I've got done listing it online, it's then available in inventory. So I have to market it. So I take the time to use Instagram as a really awesome platform to market my products to the community of people that I have as customers and just general admirers of my work by choosing the photo, creating an interesting story, product behind the scenes, making. So if you want to see more day to day behind the scenes, then I show all of that on my Instagram story. So you can check that out there. Otherwise, I then create a swipe up link to the product that I just restocked so that you're able to then go ahead and buy it on my website. How do you run the boutique? So as I run out of product to make all these things that I sell on my website, I make a note of it so that I have it on my memo to purchase when I'm next making a day of purchases. Thank you, Azalea, for this really wonderful background noise. <laughs> yeah. You love that thing, don't you? Where'd your music go? Ooh. Hey! They need stickers. Really? Come on. Come help me. We need the stickers for the healing mist. This one. 
So I get my stickers from Sticker Mule. I get them in sheet format just because it's easier for me to store them. Where do you get your oils for the hair serum from? Are they ethically sourced? Thank you. I get them from a variety of places. It really just depends what I need, if I'm in a pinch or if I'm buying for a specific oil that I like the smell of or the quality of. But for the most part, I really do love Phytocost and they're just in-house brand. I feel like they have good prices for the amount of oil that I get and the quality of the scent is really delicious. But I also use Now Essential Oils. And Justin Essential Oils. <laughs> The Aura Cassia oils, the Whole Foods brand, random ones that I found whenever I've been traveling, bulk apothecaries in house line. And not as much of a fan of their oils. <laughs> so for right now, I source as best I can for the price, primarily just because I want to keep my oils at an affordable price point. But I do also shop with other businesses that are very aware of like the process and impact that they make on the so the materials that I order, they tend to ship with like paper instead of bubble wrap. As far as the oils themselves, I'm still working on a more organic and pure uh, collection of oils, but again, that changes the price point. Once my product has been made, I follow the same process for this different product. I'm adding 14 new items available and I'm saving. From there, I go back to my Instagram. Oh my God. <laughs> this is what happens, you guys, when I try and do work. <laughs> Trying to finish posting about that healingness to my Instagram. And she's climbing all over me. Madhouse. Zay, what are you doing? Yeah, Why do you have your raincoat on inside? When did you first realize this is what you wanted to do? Having my own business and being a designer or creator and maker of things was something that I wanted to do when I was really young. I went to boarding school and I remember sitting in one of the common areas and it was like a meeting where we were all together and I had my sketchbook and I was drawing dress designs and sketches of different clothes that I would love to make and dream to wear. At that point I really realized that I wanted to sort of dig deeper into that realm of fashion and creating wearable art. Where did you learn your skills? I went to school and studied at Savannah College of Art and Design. I didn't finish my degree, but I then went on to study at Parsons in Paris. So you can actually watch more about sort of the story of the business and how it became. Um, I'll link it above. Do you hand make all of your jewelry? And if so, where did you learn that? <laughs> Yes and no. I did at one point hand make all my jewelry and I really enjoyed doing it and I still have all my gear to be able to make jewelry. But we decided for a lot of reasons that we needed the space in the bus to be more so storage rather than like workspace. And I also was just finding myself with a lack of time to sit down and really get into the groove of making a piece of jewelry. I took a two day immersive course and fell totally in love with jewelry making. What ignited your interest in herbal focused self-care? I stopped using a lot of chemical based ingredients. It really ignited this desire to learn more about how I could use that for my self-care. I had a fascination with taking care of my body using ingredients that I would consume and that I would want to have around the house and that were safe for azalea. Where did you study to make natural cosmetics? I've read books. I've studied online, I've taken courses with the Herbal Academy. What's your best advice for one morning to be self-employed? Just to be patient and to keep trying. So I've gone through ups and downs, highs and lows, financially abundant times and financially depleted times and all emotion. Back when I had my bus, I had a great year driving my bus up and down the East Coast and going to events and festivals, but my bus was just such a money eater that it took so much of my profits to get that bus repaired every time I got home. And then I needed to do this to the engine and that to the engine and constantly there was always something going on with the engine until eventually it broke down. I, at that point, became pregnant, needing to find work again to make money and my business wasn't doing so good online because I was primarily focused on in-person sales. So I was going through a huge shift 
and so I was a pizza delivery woman. I worked at a preschool, I did retail, I worked at a bar, I also worked like at a health food bar. I've done so many like on the side jobs to my main goal being Moonflower Child. Those side hustles were always there to keep me financially sound but they were never what I truly wanted to do with my time, with my day, and I always knew that I was gonna come back to Moonflower Child. Knowing that I had consistently this drive to, regardless of all the hardship that I was put through, like the bus breaking down and having to sell it and like wondering if I should close the whole business down and quit and just give up and working for someone else. Man, I have been through so much with the business and it's taken me to my lowest, lowest places where I never thought I would find myself, but it's also taken me to my highest places where it's given me so much joy to meet such a big community of people, to have the freedom to create what I want, to design what I want, and create like a website that has my own personal flair, to be able to share and foster this amazing community of people who are interested in living a lifestyle similar to what I live. Being able to do that through Moonflower Child has just been so much more rewarding than doing anything else that I wouldn't ever consider not doing it. Being self-employed, you really have to have the passion, the drive, you have to want what you want and you have to be able to keep pushing through all that really shit stuff, never always easy. Running the books and doing numbers, I suck at that. But I'm improving and I'm definitely better than I was. And I learned how to use my QuickBooks properly and to reconcile and to do all these things that I never thought I'd see myself doing. You have to be prepared to be challenged and be ready for the things that you never thought you'd be doing, the things that you know that you're not good at, the things that you find really difficult, frustrating, just push through and do those things because you will need to eventually at some point do the things that you don't want to do in a business so that's also something to keep in mind if you're considering being self-employed did you stay faithful at the beginning and know this was the right track for you i always knew that this is what i wanted to do it's allowed me to expand into different realms of art i knew that i was gonna somehow do moonflower child how do you strive to produce less waste in your business so i love recycling a lot of you have seen me with my packaging and my shipping i obviously order a lot and get it shipped to me while we're on the road and sometimes people send me boxes that are good sizes for these orders that might have like a mixture of items that I don't have a box size appropriate for so I recycle those boxes and reuse those for shipping as well as bubble wrap if you ever receive anything with bubble wrap then it's because I received something with bubble wrap so I'm just paying it forward and hope that you could find a way to pack and ship something for a friend, keep its life going, I guess, without having to throw it into the waste. I like to source from companies that are also eco-minded um, and sustainable, and they are also aware of their impact and the footprint that they leave behind on our earth. Did it cost you much money to get started? I'd love to start something similar, but not too financial. At the beginning of running my business, like I had mentioned being challenged, I wasn't good at running my numbers. I didn't take the time to sit down and budget properly. I didn't set aside money for taxes. So I would just make money from my part-time, full-time gig that I was working at, and I would funnel it into my business, kind of like mindlessly purchasing what I thought I needed at the time. And it's not like it failed because it got me to where I am now, but it's not the most efficient way. You don't need to have like three thousand dollars up front i think taking money small pieces and starting and building it is really a good way to start if you don't have a lot make a big list of what needs to be done to start your business so like filing with the state and creating your logo either doing it yourself or paying for someone to do it business cards, buying a domain creating a blog whatever it is that you're doing online or in person just make a big list of everything that you need to be doing and then maybe like once a month, treat yourself to something that you would need for your business. Honestly, you're a superwoman. What was the first step to starting your sweet biz? Start one thing at a time. Making small decisions and building your business wisely, knowing that you're doing exactly what it is that you wanna be doing. Because I think at the beginning for me, I jumped around from platform to platform. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use Squarespace or Shopify. I used Wix at one point and then I just used the uh, GoDaddy web browsers. I tried everything and I should have done all of that prior to like 
spending so much time creating my website that way I was I wouldn't have wasted so much time and I would have wasted much less money I would have just experimented with a free trial tried some things see if I liked it cancel it if I wasn't into it try a different one slowly make small financial investments into your business once you know exactly what it is that you want to be doing all right guys I gotta go change this lens because I'm using my photography lens so I'm a little bit up close but I hope that you have enjoyed this snippet of what my business is all about and I would love to hear in the comments below if you have anything that you want to know more about and uh, like what I do how I spend my time if you have any more questions throw them in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them and just be open with you guys be honest and raw and share about my business I feel like it's super important that we can see each other as mentors if we are seeking inspiration for our business if we're lost and we need support I want to make sure that we can all be here as a community a lot of you are women and I love that so I just want to make sure that we all have the support that we need to be able to accomplish what it is that we're trying to accomplish in life because life is too short to not do what we love to do and if you love to do something and you want to make it a business you can you just have to start so have a wonderful day and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on the flippity flip peace